Okay, we now come to our next uh, speaker, who is uh, Reinhard Altenhöhner from the German National Library. There at DNB, he is head of information infrastructure and preservation. And thanks uh, to the honor to introduce you, I've learned that this unit has 115 employees. So that is, I think, more IT people than uh, than uh, um, other libraries have uh, as librarians. <laughs> Not all IT, but all uh, IT related, I think, if it's in the Department for Infrastructure and Preservation, so 115 stuff in that department. Um, um, in his function, he is responsible for the IT infrastructure, preservation topics, and of course also strategy development at DNB. Um, his special interest is on uh, standardization, data interoperability, which of course is a big topic for a national library, and also semantic technologies and digital preservations. Um, his talk is entitled Access to Knowledge, uh, Text Mining and Information Extraction in the German National Library. Please, it's your turn. No, thank you very much. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, first of all, I should say that these 115 people, are, a lot of them are dedicated to really practical work around printed books and things like that. So this makes me explain a bit this huge number of people. This is work intensive. Yeah, I appreciate to be here and um, I'm very, uh, I would like to thank, to say thank you to the organizers to bring uh, this broad variety of different communities and domains together. I'm really um, impressed um, what I've got, can get, get here. Um, I'd like in the next minutes, I'd like to present a bit our view on what text mining could mean and I try to be very pragmatic or practical um, because we have really high pressure to um, um, focus on what text mining can be in the sense of that we have really high numbers of, of data and we have principally one problem which means that we are not coming from one specific domain for example from the medicine or pharmacy or something like that but we've got everything and which means this means that um, we have to address different different needs from different um, specific communities or domains and this makes you will see I think somehow the difference um, to describe a bit the starting point, some views um, on, on the library. It's not to go in detail here. We have our tradition, as you can see, for old reading halls on one hand, new buildings on the other hand. We have more than um, 100 years now, as you can see here, um, um, of our existence. Um, to give you an overview, we were established or founded in 1912. Um, as a federal institution with some preliminary um, prehistoric um, um, parts of the story, but it's not the case to be um, here in place. We have around about 750 um, people of, of staff. Part of them is on a non-permanent base. We can see that we do a lot of project development. Um, I have counted here some figures for budget. Um, what's important here is our extended mandate in 2006. We've got a new name, of course. But um, in addition to what I've got to, to present here, it's very important to say that for 2006, we enriched our legal mandate to online publications. We have had some former assets to address online publications for sure. Um, but starting with 2006, we are officially mandated to handle digital objects, original digital objects, more digital, as you can say. Um, now that's the point. Um, this legal mandate states us to collect, index, archive, and provide access, permanent access to all the materials you collect. And this is independent from the physical uh, carrier we've got it, from microfilms or sound recordings, CD-ROM, DVD, whatever you want on physical carriers. And since, as stated, 2006, we enriched this mandate to online publications. Um, the access is restricted. Somehow we have uh, touched here the question of copyright. Uh, we have it, of course, uh, really strong. So usually the access to material is limited to the usage in the um, reading halls with the specific exceptions of, on, uh, of, of um, open access material. 
What I would like to say here is that DNB is one of the world's largest metadata producers and suppliers. So we are, part, we are part of a big network of libraries and related domains or institutions. Um, we produce metadata. And if you see the countings here, you can have, we, have, we can count 30 million uh, media units. That's not so much in comparison to articles, but we count here um, issues or, or, or complete journals, and not on the, we don't count. We do not count on the article base, but on the whole of the huge um, media we have. The number of me, um, online media or more digitals is not so high, but it's, you can say it depending from the way you count it. So, if we count a complete website or things like that, you can imagine that's a question: um, what do you count really? Um, as you can see, our legal deposit on the physical carriers is still higher than the online um, access, but as I stated here, the information be in, in, in between is the relevant one, and if you count Springer journals and we counted for only the journals, um, you can estimate that we have huge mass of digital material. Um, Okay, processing the interest is one, um, one challenge. I don't want to address it here. Um, but as you can imagine, we have to do, and that's the reason why I cho uh, chose this slide, is to say we have really mass problems, the sense of that we have to handle um, big files and we have to handle masses of different unique um, publications. <laughs> um, index in the DNB, and this is to explain a bit where we come from. Um, and maybe you remember libraries, and we are one of the forecrafts for um, um, rules, for um, regulations, which we got cataloging rules, things like that. We do traditionally intellectual based description of publications in a defined quality level um, given by standards, and this is mostly in the past was mostly manual doing. Um, and, and in this sense, our cataloging framework are the rules, um, and it's important to name here the authority file. It was named just before in the presentation of Klaus Tochtermann, the uh, Gemeinsame Normdatei, integrated authority file, which encompasses a set of different authority files we use. I will explain a bit more what we are doing here. And around the GND, we have a circle of different other ontologies, you can say, in the new language. Um, and cross-reference, cross-concordances to, for example, the thesaurus of economics or at agrobock and things like that. A lot of these instruments, tools are available. As stated, we have a strong pressure to address somehow of classification, some, some steps of classification for the materials we have got in an online way. Um, and it's easy to say that we have bet, bet much better preconditions to do that. We have full text, we have something similar to that. What I mean is uh, some, something around, I will show you a bit. What we even have is uh, much more availability of marketing data. We collect these data too, and we combine these data with our um, existing data uh, bases, so we can get information from these marketing metadata in a more or less efficient way. Our skeleton is named before this so-called integrated authority file. Um, it's widely used not only in the G DNB, but in the cultural domain, in, in the whole cultural heritage domain. Um, it's one of the most important, I think, data sources for VIAF, and I think you know that, and, and for ISNI. Um, we have around about F.2 million records in or data, data sets within this database. Um, and you can see some, some figures for the amount of data we've got in this corporate body, this authority file. This is our, yeah, I, I called it skeleton. It enhances um, persons, corporate bodies, congresses, geographic entities, topics, and much more things around what works. It's published as a linked open data set, as our bibliographic data set even is published as linked open data. We do a lot in the environment of linked open data or linked data. And we have some activities. I have skipped it here for this presentation around semantic web technologies, publication, and enhancement of these different tools. We are doing some, um, I think it's more, more than uh, uh, an asset. It's a productive um, 
service, uh, for example, entity facts is one of the services where we can get on a light byte REST interface information to some of the objects from the German, um, from this gemeinsame Normaltype, from this GND. Um, it's easily it's possible to easily in integrate this into our port your portal applications, for example. <clears throat> and it encompasses information from the Wikipedia, from other different data sets. We align those data sets and we have some sort of a store for RDF-based data. But it's not, not my point here today. I'd like to address a bit our, yeah, our starting point again. Um, we do our work for other institutions mostly. Um, so it's clear that our own interfaces for our data could be enhanced, could be enriched, for example, by using different um, instruments like um, ontologies between different, or aligned ontologies, different data sets to enrich queries, for example. That's not my topic here. We do something in this regard, but our most or strong focus is on indexing, on classification and indexing, and for the distribution of data sets multiple reuse in the international domain. Thinking on multilingual access, for example, so it's important to have information like this to visualize it a bit. So most of data are non-structured, of course. We do something around structured metadata, and we do it, these rule-based classification description data set, we do it for other libraries, for users, for data enrichment on the fly, for retrieval, someone else can use it. And we offer this data as a data set as a source for someone else. So it's not really for a um, researcher in our reading hall. It's more for other institutions to contribute to international global network of information. So here we are. Mm. And um, especially for these online publications, I can say that we, since 2010, have no intellectual cataloging for online resources. What we do mainly is automatically produce title descriptions, so one asset or track, you can say. We use metadata, secondly, from other depositors or from other sources, and we mix them up with our own, current, our own core data we have, and we use results from automatic index processing. The frame in which we do it um, is this so-called Petros, Prozess unterstützende Software für die Digitale Deutsche Nationalbibliothek, or Process Supporting Software um, for the Digital German National Library. That's the umbrella, how we do it. And to give you some ideas where we try to follow these different tracks, machine-based indexing is uh, one of the core entities, you can say here, but structure recognition and entity recognition are some other parts of our activities. The structure recognition leads to really formal description. The other activities leads to linkages, to relations to our core value GND. So different tracks are running here. As I try to explain a bit what we are doing here. Structure recognition, only to, to give you an idea, I think that's not really surprising. Some assets are on the way, and especially for this type of, of, um, of uh, literature, it's relatively easy because it's well structured, which means that we can extract from the digital version of these publications or digitized versions of the structural, of these, and we have both, we have old a lot of masses of old dissertations, for example. You can extract, and this works quite well, different information and can relate it to different um, properties in our um, metadata frame set. And so all those and in the publishing year and things like that could be collected and could be easily integrated into our databases. One point. Another point, and it sounds from my point of view somehow very, very basic, but it's helpful, is the processing of bibliographic data. I've mentioned some of them by getting external data. Uh, what would we do in addition is to exchange metadata from one object to another object. So we try to identify parallel editions. And if you know a bit the publication market, you know as a lot of, public, of parallel uh, public editions of similar or evil in the same works. This could be an open access publication or it could be an article-based publication. It could be different issues of a work 
This could be link and, and all this information is related to each other and it's useful to exchange the information. At one place you have deeper information and you enrich the other, the other descriptions with this information. We're using supply metadata from other providers and we use a, as core our database. Um, other issues or other assets here are the links to the, the automatic production of links to the integrated authority file. This is close to the entity recognition I would like to address later. And interesting point, we try to exchange and pass on classification information from record to another. And this could be done in, in different systems. So one um, document uh, group is classified by a specific system, by a specific thesaurus, having an um, ontology-based exchange or mapping tool, you can transfer those kind of information on a steady base to other objects in your collection. Very important issue here is to avoid a merging of records. The classical view would be to match and merge records, but to bundle these records. Don't say that's the same, but we bring this together to state for users or for researchers the entity, these objects in our catalog are related somehow. Small view on the tool set. Um, we have the classical way to use database jobs, match and merge by our provided software. And we use um, Culture Graph. It's, a, it's made, it's a platform for data processing. It's an implementation, a Hadoop cluster in the HBase database. So this named um, um, technologies here before and before are used from in the library too. And we enriched this for specific jobs for the ingest, for the um, manipulation of this data, for statistics, for indexing, and for the matching of related data um, with own, uh, own set, an own developed set of um, tools as published as a uh, library, Java libraries for bibliographic data processing, Metamorph, it's um, open source software, and it's used by other institutions too to fac facilitate the ingest of material into this data cluster. The idea is to bundle duplicates, to enrich objects, for example, to add digitized parts of an object to a description of an object, to translate his array, for example, we have done something like that, and yeah, of course, for vocabulary and pattern controlling, if you have a mass of data, you can do some statistics on that and you can find out where specific focal points, obviously, in the manual or intellectual classification process has been done, and you can transfer those inside views to the use of one digital, to the use of ontologies in the environment of online publications. The core value are here is are the algorithms, I think, in the end. It's difficult to share this kind of um, know-how, but I think that could be a relevant point to, to come to a closer um, cooperation. This for the first part, <clears throat> and one example for this bundling of records, we have loaded um, 100 million data sets, I think, now for the different regional networks, and we offer these in a public form, this kind of information, this kind of knowledge to the public and give some statistics on that. You can compare your own entry in the database, in the huge database of this uh, culture graph bundling cluster. And so you can compare this metadata, you can take this metadata in an easily um, operational form, load, uh, load down, download, and so on. Next step, text processing techniques. Um, I've I know that tomorrow Averbis, the company Averbis, will present a bit on, it's, it's more on patent, but I think it's similar technology they use, so I wait to go in detail here. We use this platform, and it was enhanced, I think, uh, for us to index full text publications, but even tables of contents, um, of digitized publications, of monographs, um, and we integrate, of course, bibliographic records we have as our knowledge base. And we try, and we do, um, classify these objects by DDC subject classes. That's a small amount of, of basic classes. We are very successful with the medical notations, actually. And the next step, and the more advanced step, I'm going to say, is the subject indexing using the GND by, address, uh, by, by 
registering or by announcing the subject headings to the single objects using the GND. What does this mean? The CDC classes means that we have these categories one hundred round about. And um, in, within the awareness platform, machine learning procedures are in place. Um, it's a mix of um, linguistic approaches on the one hand, first step in the process, and afterwards um, it's more or less statistics, probabilistic um, methods. And um, in the end, or in production since 2012, but for the complete range of objects we have, this calculation is made by addressing the subject headings coming from the GND. It's a subset of the subject headings. It's not complete uh, GND, as you can imagine. But this works quite well. I think, I don't know who is here from Averbis, but I think they will present a bit. Patent documents are very strong, structured, somehow easier, but dressing the full text maybe is a challenge too, and I think it's the same technique here. Um, subject indexing, I've named it before, um, is more or less similar as a subset that's important from the GND because it came out that the mass of information, and that is one of our challenges, uh, the GND is too broad, too deep, you can say, um, really to, to have good results um, around subject indexing. So we use a subset and we, I think that's a question of the future, we have to reduce it more. Um, we are quiet or we, we address most of our online publications, we assign um, the subject headings. I give you a small example here, what does it mean? So um, from this different projects, from this Petrus frame, we add the information I, I, I name here, what, what here is the relation to another publication, here um, the Petrus 3 thing. Um, we transfer the information, the indexing information from the other, other um, edition. We, oops, we add the class of this object, so it's come out that this DDC class 3 3.0 is equivalent one. We address, we transfer to other editions, and so on. What I'd like to uh, address at least is uh, a more advanced approach. I think it was an asset to enhance our knowledge on objects by using really the full texts. It's a cooperation with the Max Planck Institute Informatik last year and the year before. The goal is to enrich the existing data and to enrich even the media display, what we show. So to integrate the context knowledge we have or we can get, I think it's similar to the <coughs> approach of Roach, um, to enhance information around an object, showing the digitized version and adding other information you have. But the special focus here is on entities. Mostly relevant here are persons and I think this is really big potential for um, these kind of, uh, um, yeah, this kind to handle the, the, the objects. Um, what we use, again, is GND, but we enhance the GND as a source, as a science source or a knowledge source with the Wikipedia and other information, other related information. Um, it's in the end relatively easy. We load um, the GND, we load Wikipedia information, and we load title descriptions, and we load other information around often the table of contents into a database, um, or no, this is a data store. Um, and the software from the Max Planck Institute derivates from this or counted. Um, at the end statements, key phrases, simple statements. And these simple, simple statements are well evaluated and stat in, on a statistic base, and in this way we can count, yeah, you can say, confidential rooms. And then you can detect entities specifically here, named uh, a person, a location, or a concept here, you can say a concept here, a historic concept and to address and to order then in the next step the um, GND entries to the named entities here. This is quite um, interesting and we can display it so we have a digitized version of a document and we can enhance it, the information with the related 
information from our data source or our knowledge source. Basically, this is the most challenging thing, and here we can see that mostly our drop-off is uh, especially the mass and the processing of these high volumes of data. Um, for sure, I can say as a conclusion that text mining or data mining is not potentially, it will come up, I think, has become an essential role in DNP for the online resources and even for printed books. So we can make use of the fact that knowledge on online resources helps us to uh, describe, to classify printed objects too. And for sure, we will extend our efforts um, in, to, to invest in this uh, way to address the need to index. Um, actually, we are building a new technology, technical platform, our, our cluster, to enhance our cluster, you can say, and um, we try to be prepared um, for the next steps. Um, what is taking place outside of us, you can say, is a new cataloging and, and, and indexing framework, so we have to integrate this framework of rules in our approach. Um, what I've tipped on is a is this kind of challenges we have to face. Um, this disambiguation of entities is, in our case specifically, where we have all the materials of the cultural domain, um, difficult. Um, and um, it's an ongoing effort. One can find nice uh, use cases in the small data sets, but to be honest, in this, with millions of objects, um, you have really problems to do that. Um, and, and we are trying, quite convinced that we can handle this by a more or less process and minimize sets of data, virtually minimize sets of data, but it's difficult. And same um, scalability or mass processing, for example, text um, extraction from different sources is a problem, and, and we have really problems with that. So the failure rates are not, uh, are not nice, and it's not, uh, it's, it's somehow, it makes me nervous and angry that we have often in the beginning of the processing chain, of the process chain problems to have um, accurate texting as a base for any other steps. And third issue, and I think it uh, should be addressed here by this, is accounting of quality measurement. Um, we need a possibility to evaluate on a regular base what come out from our routines and to handle this um, if you consider that we have some 100,000 of objects, we try to address with um, these indexed um, um, terms. Um, you can imagine that the trust with regard to our organization is a serious problem, and people expect that we deliver correct data, which means that we have properties with our data, saying our confidentiality value is here or here, but um, the idea that we have to re-evaluate our processing and re-establish new um, tools to get better data and to exchange or to deliver new data is not really, has not really a place in our environment actually. So the data come out and the people see it as more or less stable. So we are in a process of change, I think, a move to understand that data, especially um, statements on objects are fluent and has, they, they become object of continuous change in the long run. Thus, this is a broader view, I think, especially for the cultural heritage domain, but I could imagine that for you the same, that we are more and more reluctant to say we have a stable statement on an object and all the information we have around. So, thank you. <laughs>